Okay, first of all, Matt Black started about a year, a year and a half ago. Um, basically, we were brainstorming for a while about breaking out of our our regular grind of, of being club DJs and uh, playing music that, that we liked from the heart. And, uh, you know, not, being have, not having to be told that all the kids like this, so play this. But, we, you know, you know being a purveyor of the music that we love and hopefully you know we could sort of you know find or create an audience for the music that we like because we knew that you know maybe the clubs were probably you know they're going to definitely go in that direction but you know there are still people who like good music who probably don't go to those clubs or there's other scenes where you know people appreciate you know broader or more eclectic sort of um, a range of music range of music and um, at the time, uh, uh, I think that was a year and a half ago, uh, I was uh, getting a lot of clients because I was freelancing already at Left Zook. And I was telling him and Paul, our other partner, that, you know what, there's a lot of work out here to, to play stuff that we want to play. So, you know, it was kind of like a business idea at the same time as a collective idea, collective way of thinking of, you know, you know we're going to create gigs for ourselves and play what we want and then let, let's see what, how it goes from there. And that sort of like ranged from anything from playing quality hip hop and R&B and soul and funk and soul to uh, even Latin Latin jazz and funk and yeah. uh, even house and disco. Yeah, everything basically. So, um, everything that was based on soul, yeah, soul music, yeah, folk, Cuban and stuff like that. Because every Friday, my dad would take us to the record shop at the mall. And uh, my uncle had it, and we were playing it at his house, and I liked it, and I asked my dad on that record. So that particular time, we went and bought Rick James. What's the cover picture? Was he like? Yeah, he's wearing leather, leather, and the Mary Jane girls are walking like hookers oh, behind him. Oh right, right, right. Yes, I think. I think. Right. I think. Is think. that what made you yeah. buy it? <laughs> yeah. The Mary Jane girls. No, no, no. The song was dope, man. <laughs> okay. Super freak, man. Oh, I can't remember really. Seriously, there was a few, and uh, I think it was a hip hop record. Super old. Hip-hop. Were you already DJing? Are you talking about DJ? No, no, no like not, even, not even, not even, not even. Like um, my dad had an old Akai at home, right? So yeah. I just went out to the record store just to buy one because he had jazz records back then. Mm-hmm. And you know, back then I was still young. I wasn't like, so it. into You're that jazz it. yet, right? Not like now, but back then. So it was a hip hop record, probably like one of those nineties. Uh, Early 90s or, so, or late 80s. Could be like a Sugar Hill gang or something like that. Right. So, yeah, I think it was. But it was a couple was it of Dollar Bin or was it like, you know, off the top charts? No, it was actually like off, like it was a new record. Oh, okay. Right? Like just went right. to the record store. I was like, oh. it's so sad though. Mm. I can't remember. Arms, how about you? Because you only started buying it when it was cool, right? Yeah, no, I'm sorry. kidding. <laughs> <laughs> of course. No, I'm just kidding. I was at Sugar Road. No. Yeah. Seriously? Seriously. Okay. Yeah, I was just kidding. Yeah, I saw a Far Side. I saw a Far Side. Far Side album. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah, really? <laughs> yeah, guy. For two bucks. Yeah. It's like, really? oh my god, that's Far Side. I'm gonna steal it. Keep the market, you know? <laughs> yeah. really Trying to DJ as a, as a kid in grade school for like our Halloween parties and shit. Because my cousins were doing it, you know, for their basement party. They had older cousins who could actually really DJ with proper equipment. And I was putting together library AV equipment with my realistic mixer from Radio Shack and, and, and putting together sets and uh, we had two school tape decks where I actually would double get doubles of whatever I wanted and then also on these big, <laughs> big ass bulky like library yeah you know turntables play 12 inch records of that so yeah you could do it with tapes but uh, but the format I guess largely in, in the 80s or we grew up is final records Right, right, yeah. You gotta beg, borrow, steal, or buy them, you know, but we, we got our hands on them, right? Wow, how did they come by vinyl records? I, I remember back in the day, there was like a lots of uh, record stores back in the day, right? You just walk into record stores and you could see like all these record covers, like LPs all over the wall. And that itself was intriguing, you know? And like, wow. You just go in and it's yeah. all over the wall and then you see these bins of, of rec- stacks of records everywhere and you just... And 45s was the mainstay, right? Like, because yeah. you know, singles would come out, they'd come out on 45. So there's a huge 45 section, right? right. Like for every depends. song. It's like, for you, you did in Canada. Yeah, uh, I'm talking about Canada. I don't know what it's like in Singapore. Yeah, yeah. whatever. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, it's it's quite true. I think uh, vinyl is just 
don't know, it's, it's just the one thing that got me like getting into it because you know you have the cover and everything like that. And you, just like what's on this thing you're just wondering what's on this whole thing right here so you have to buy it just to figure it out you know back then you couldn't like even listen there's no internet or anything like that you can't like even do like ch try to check out what, what the song is and stuff like that. so yeah um i think the only thing that you'd find out more about the vinyl is through magazines back then you know like hip-hop magazines and all when there's a release it will tell you like and then you go to the record store and you'll find it but yeah that's how it is back then Primitive. And then now since everything is digital, do you think that vinyl is still relevant? Uh, yeah, this guy. <laughs> Lots of records still. <laughs> no, I mean, uh, I, it's still <laughs> relevant, of course. Um, you know, there's lot, a lot of purists out there that still uh, listen to records. I still buy vinyl, you know. Um, I, I, I'm more picky right now, <laughs> rather. Not, not as like, I'll just buy any kind of vinyl, you know, because uh, you, you want to probably uh, have a good collection of more quality stuff. Is that your WhatsApp? <laughs> yeah, kind of me. You know, for me, it's kind of weird because, okay, we've been playing with Serato for a long time, and I love the records that I have. So I miss playing those records, so it's been a very hard thing to buy new records to replace these neglected records that are, I haven't been able to play. So I have a lot of love for the records that I've collected along the way. And I, you know, so I just haven't been really anxious to buy or dig because I, I just enjoy playing my old records and just getting to know them again. And then once I get sick of those, maybe I'll buy more records. But I'm just kind of like sitting back on my collection and just enjoying that. Um, yeah, so that's it's kind of weird that way. Like some people are like just like, keep buying, 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 but like I haven't played them in such a long time that you know when we get to play them or when we decide we're going to play them, it's just like I fall in love with those songs again. You know, there's a difference. Yeah, you know, digital and definitely um, and it's also like uh, how you can easily like just get MP3s right mm -hmm. um, vinyl if you really want it if you really wanted that vinyl uh, and it's not as easily obtainable you have to search and dig for it you know if it's something that's really hard to get or it's from like the 60s or 70s let's say if it's an old funk or soul record um, sometimes they're not even like on mp3 or any digital format out there you have to really dig for it you know uh and and that's what the value of it comes to um a lot of uh hip-hop djs hip-hop producers out there really search for such uh music because uh, they they, they want to get something that that probably you can't find anywhere and and want to sample it and uh, put it on their on their beats and stuff like that. And people are like, "What the hell is that? You know, I've never heard that before." Oh man, he got that sample off this thing that's super hard to get. This record, you know, and they only press like back then like 100 pieces, and you're like, "Oh, this is a lucky guy who got that." So uh, that's one thing also, you know, um, collection, um, and that's a, a, another thing right there. It's like how much people would pay for hard to, to find vinyls. That's a, a whole new thing. That's why you have eBay, you know, discogs and yeah, all of that. What does what it mean, mean to you? It's like I keep finding. Is it a format, <laughs> or is it a vest? Is it a, is it the format, or is it the vessel that gives you the music? That is it the music, or is it, or is it the final itself? So. Yes, that is it. <laughs> it's both, man. It's it's really. <sighs> I don't know, man. It's just both, man. I don't know why. Why do I have so much vinyls for, right? It's like... I guess like the crunchy song of... I think what, what it really means to me, like my collection right here, just vinyl, what it means to me, and what I have is basically... Or, or even for you guys, I think it's... It's it's, a, it's like your, your life soundtrack yeah. of what you've been through. You know? This is my sound of my life. This is what I, I like. You know, you could go through anybody else's vinyls and that's totally a different sound of all yeah. together. And that's their soundtrack of their life, you know. I mean, we're so much into music yeah. and this is the way we express ourselves. You know, the thing is, is, it means actually a lot to me. And if you think of it, it probably means a lot to you because, you know, we didn't have a lot of money to spend. But we spent all the money that we had <laughs> during that time on, on vinyls, or we still do. And that means a lot more than, you know, downloading a song for free and, oh, this is my favorite song, or, you know, buying it for $2 or 99 cents. 
we were going through some tough times coming up and we're still buying vinyls. Yeah. You know, it's you know, you could go to a club and say, should I buy a drink at Zook? Wait, that's the same price as a, a, a record. <laughs> should I drink or buy a record? Okay, <laughs> fuck drinking. We're gonna go buy a record tomorrow. <laughs> like, yeah. you know, it was literally, a, a yeah, direct relation yeah. of how much <laughs> vinyl you can buy is how much money you have in your pocket and how much you're gonna spend on something stupid or something that you love. Back That's then, that was the only way you could get it. Yeah. Now you can only buy music by buying it. Right now, it's like you can download it. You know, by any means of ways to download, right? But back then, that was the only way to get music. Either buy vinyl, CDs, or if you're from way back, cassette tapes, way back too. Um, yeah. Then you know, change digital format came out and stuff. I guess. So, that's what vinyl means to us, I guess. For me, it's like mostly like that's that's my soundtrack right there. You go through my records and you're like, oh, that's what he is. You know, that's his his liking. His thing. It's a constant reminder of how much you love music because how much you sacrifice to get it. You know, it's like yeah, I went hungry sometimes and I got my phone disconnected sometimes because I went not to be vinyl, but it meant a lot to me. It, it still does, and you know, it just reminds us like how passionate you about it because you know what, how much money do you think you spent on your vinyls? At least fifty thousand dollars easily, right? Don't tell your wife. Man, yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> Don't even go there. Don't even go there, man. Don't even go there. Um, Stepping out of a shop with a full bag load of vinyls, you guys know it yourself, right? And then you go back home, it's either your mom or your girlfriend, or you... But vinyls again? <laughs> like, but it's a new one! <laughs> you know? So you have all these excuses and you're like, you just go back into your room and turn on your turntable. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Yeah. That's I, have this, <laughs> I have this phobia of uh, going to Tokyo. I'm going to Tokyo for the first time this year in December, but like... Good luck! All of my, <laughs> all of my record friends, all my DJ friends have, have told me about going record shopping in, in Tokyo where like, you know you spend all your money and then you have to go to an all night karaoke to, to find a place to sleep so that you can get back on the plane the next day. So I don't yeah. know, is that, re is that a true story? Somebody told me. Uh, Somebody went record shopping, one of our friends, and they spent all their hotel money on records. So they had to go to like places that were open all night just so they could loiter until the morning so that they could actually you know, have a place for shelter. Or they could go back oh to record God. shopping or back on to the airport and, and you know go back home. That dude spent the last huh? <laughs> Yeah. Oh man, no. <laughs> I, I think we're all gonna do there. very different sets. It's yeah. not gonna be like I'm building off of his set. He's gonna do what he did or what he wants to do, and he's gonna do what he wants to do, and I'm gonna do what I wanna do, and they're gonna be like very separate sets from each other, I think. Yeah. Um, I, yeah. Right? It's arms first, not really first, probably a second gig. Was it your yeah, first, second, yeah. third, or something like that? He's gonna bring out his uh, gems, so better watch out for this guy because he's gonna kill it, yeah, yeah, skill it. Um, looking forward to that. So we giving him the main set? No, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, he's, he's doing early part. Yeah, well, yeah. You doing? I'm doing the later part because I gotta. I probably be be playing the fastest out of all because I kind of want to play a like a classic house kind of hip house kind of disco stuff that I have. And uh, you're, you're going to mix it up, right? Yeah, yeah I think... Uh, I think it's... It's it's going to be a, a nice, diverse collection kind of thing where we're just going to take out a, a records that we like and um, share it with, you know, people anyway. out there, right? Yeah. That probably maybe have even heard that kind of stuff. But uh, these, these are probably uh, um, gonna be more like digs that we've like pulled out somewhere, digging, digging in there. Or are you guys playing with? You guys are right. Darren's 